So, all right. So I will just start with my presentation and tell you that um, Farm Service Agency, who we are, um, we have subsidy programs and we have farm loan programs. And I'm gonna talk mostly about the farm loan programs because that's what I do. And then at the very end, if we have time, I'll go over what some of the subsidy, subsidiary programs and some of the other programs that we offer to help with the farmers. So we're, um, the farm loan program provides temporary credit to agricultures that can't get money from a commercial lender. So if you're just starting out and have no equity in your operation or um, you don't have great credit, and that we are here to help you get your credit, to help you get started. We're here to keep you in business. We do not compete with commercial credit. So if you are able to get commercial funding, then you are not to come to our office to get the money. We, we our goal eventually, like the screen says, is to graduate you to get commercial credit. So we help you get going. We help you get your um, operation financially stable, I guess you could say. And then we push you off into the commercial credit so they can help you. So we have, um, there was, I think I jumped ahead. Yeah, we have different types of loans. So we're gonna go over those. We have a, um, an easy guarantee loan, a farm ownership loan and an operating loan. And so we'll go over each one of those in some details. Um, the easy guarantee is for a loan up to a hundred thousand. And what that is, is if you want to go to a commercial bank, then the commercial bank comes to farm service agency. And we are at this point, they are our um, customer and they apply for the guarantee and you work with them and we work with the bank. So um, the farm ownership loan, we can give you guys, we can loan up to 1,776,000, uh, that's to buy ground. That's for a guaranteed loan, the same thing, you go to a commercial banker, if they feel like their loan is just a little bit uh, iffy and they feel like they would be more able to help you if they were to have it secured by the government funding and that's what the guarantee does is that but we finance up to a certain we back it I guess we don't finance we we back it up to a certain percentage to make sure that if there's a loss on your farm that we cover it and the government then pays the bank back so that they are now a whole amount of money that you borrowed from them and the farm operating loan is the same the same thing we can and that the farm operating loan is to buy equipment or to buy cows or I mean your livestock or, and to help you get your operations started, the farm ownership is to purchase ground. So that's the two differences in those. If I'm going too fast, just jump in with questions because I talk fast. So um, those are, so we have the farm ownership. So these are our direct loans. And so the guaranteed loans is where you work with a commercial lender. And then our direct loans is something that you would go into the office and work with a, with a farm loan officer. And we do the farm ownership loans, the operating loan, micro loans, and we do emergency loans. Oops, hold on just a second. Okay, so this just is a uh, little graph that shows you what type of our loans we have. The farm ownership, if you come to work with FSA and not with a commercial lender, we can just loan you up to $600,000. Our terms on those loans can be up to 40 years and our interest rates are fixed. So once you get the loan, that amount stays there for the whole length of the loan. A participation loan is where you get 50% of the loan funds from us, and then you go 50% of the loan funds from a commercial lender. Our interest rate on those at this time is two and a half percent. And why they do that is just to help you um, able on our end to help it be more feasible to get your plan to work where the commercial lenders sometimes charge higher rates. And, uh, and shorter terms. So and the down payment loan is up to 20 years and that is for 45% of your farm or ranch that you're gonna purchase the, the price of that. And it can be up to 45% of the appraised value. The maximum we can loan on that is the 667,000. So um, a farm ownership is a, for a micro loan is up to 25 years, we can finance that and we can finance $50,000. So if you have just a smaller piece of property, I don't, I've never done one of those loans because I can say right now with the way the, the property prices are, I don't think that's gonna be very feasible in our area. So, okay, our direct operating loans, this is mostly what I work on in my area because I'm out of Summit County. So um, our direct operating loans are 400,000. Uh, they can help you like I said before, you can get your equipment or you could get 
you know, you're starting into your operations um, and they can be termed up to seven years right now. Our interest rate is 2.25%. And so they financed from one to seven years on those. Um, a direct operating loan also could be an annual operating loan to help you annually with your crops that you're planting, you know, if they need to be replanted yearly and we can help in the way you make your payment on those is by what you're producing on the property or your operation. Uh, the microloan is just the same type of a, a loan. The interest or, or the amount is just quite a bit lower. There's a lot less paperwork for the microloan. So that's why they're, uh, most people try to start out with those if they're just beginning. So the lowest, um, an emergency loan, they are the lowest of the following, either 100% of your actual or physical losses, or we can loan up to 500,000. Um, those terms are one to seven years, possibly up to 20 years for non-real estate purposes, but they could possibly go up to 40 years for the physical on, losses on real estate. So because our interest rates have been so low the last several years, we've not done any of these emergency loans. So we would just do a normal operating loan to help you if you got into that position at this point. But if the interest rates continue to rise, then that would be something that more people might use. And a, lot, um, a youth loan, we can loan up to $5,000 for, I believe it's a youth 10 to ages 21. And we can also do that yearly, or you can do it to where you have a payment yearly if you wanna buy something to where um, we can finance it up to seven years also. So. Um, I'm going to get to my notes real fast. Just one second. Okay, so your eligibility to get our loans, um, you have to do your credit history. And if you can get credit elsewhere, like I said before, we can't help you if you can get credit from a commercial lender. You have to have managerial experience and owner operator. You have to be the owner operator of your operation. So if you want to come in and, and say you own the ground, that you're going to lease it to someone else, that you're not eligible to get the the loan that would have to be for whoever is operating the ground. And it has to be a family sized operation. The micro loan is better, was a program that was developed to better serve the unique financial operating needs of a beginning um, or a small, the smallest of a family farm. Yeah, like I said before, the operation, the micro loan applications are much simpler. There's not much paperwork to them. And if you don't have any experience, this is the loan that is better for you because you can get a mentor and have them write you a letter and say they're going to help you. And that's how the best way is to get started in your operation is to, to just do a micro loan. Um, the, for the loans, if you're a beginning farmer, then these are some of the requirements that you have to have. You can't have operated a farm for more than 10 years. Um, you have to meet the loan eligibility requirements that we were just looking at on the other page. Um, substantially participates in the operation of a farm. Um, the FO, so to get a farm ownership loan, you have, had, you have had to operate a farm three out of the last 10 years in order to be eligible to apply to get a farm ownership loan. There are some other, um, other stipulations, I guess we could say, that if you've had some years, I need to look it up real fast, um, 16 hours of posted secondary education and agriculture related field, or if you had like one year management as a farm laborer or substantial management on a, on a, on a different farm. There's several other um, bullet points that we can go over. If you have questions, you can reach me, talk to me after. Um, let's see, for the purposes of FO loan, you cannot have it be greater than 30% of the average size farm in your county. Okay, so this, I just thought it would be interesting. If you did a $400,000 loan at 2.25% interest rate for seven years, your payment would be $62,000 for the year and your interest that you'd pay would be $36,000. So that's just kind of show you how it works. Farm Service Agency will charge you a credit report fee at the beginning, which is very minimal. And then at the end, they'll charge you some filing fees to do some, put some liens on whatever you're purchasing, but there's no other closing costs or any other costs associated with our loans. Um, and this is if you were to get a farm ownership loan for 400,000, our current interest rate is 2.875% for 40 years. Your payment would be $16,958. And your interest, if you paid it off in the whole 40 years, would be over $200,000, $250,000. So 
Um, those are just some things that you can think about. I went really fast, but that was our farm loan program. So now we'll go over some of the other programs that Farm Service Agency offers. And I have some notes because I don't do these. My coworker is a better educated in these. So um, the agriculture risk coverage program and, and the price loss coverage is, it provides coverage for revenue losses at the county level. Um, payments are issued to the actual county crop revenue of the covered commodity that is less than the ARCO guarantee for the covered commodity. So we don't do many of those in Summit County, but I know there are other counties. I know that Box Elder counties and some of the other counties in the state do a lot of those. Um, PLC program payments are issued when the effective price of a covered commodity is less than representative reference for the price for that commodity. So if the effective price equals the higher of the market year average, um, or the national average, the loan for the recovered commodity. So those are not, that's not a very popular program that we do a lot of in our office. Um, we mostly deal with the livestock forage disaster program. And we do a lot of NAP in our, in our office to do, to help cover with your crops. And I think with the urban uh, farms, then the crop disaster assistant program would probably be beneficial to you. Um, that is financial assistance that produces that um, assistance to producers of crops that are not eligible for crop insurance to protect against lower yields of crops unable to be planted due to natural disasters. So the NAP provides basic coverage equivalent to a catastrophic level risk protection plan of an insurance coverage. So let me see what else. Um, the dairy program that's listed on there also, that's for the dairy farmers. Um, and I lost my notes on that. Um, you can, the operations can manually elect to receive coverage on percentages of the operations predict production history for the last 5% increments, not to exceed 95%. So um, ELAP is a program that provides financial assistance to eligible producers of livestock, honeybees, and farm raised fish for losses due to disease and certain adverse weather events or loss conditions, including blizzards or wildfires as determined by the secretary. In recent years, producers have been able to take advantage of the water hauling and feed transportation benefits under the ELAP program to mitigate loss due to a drought. So right now, because we're having such a hard time with that, that might be a program that would be beneficial to some as well. Um, the Livestock Forage Program is a program that provides compensation to eligible livestock producers who have suffered grazing losses covered livestock on the land that is native native, or improved pasture land where permanent vegetation covered or is planted specifically for grazing. The grazing losses must be due to a qualifying drought condition during the normal grazing period for the county. So is there any questions so far? Because I think I spoke really fast and I'm done. <laughs> so is Ruby still here? I am here and um, I don't think there's any other, I don't think I've seen and oh, um, let's see. Did you talk about how to get that farm number? I can't remember if you did that at the beginning or not. Let me um, let me have Demzy see if she's available for one second. She can just kind of stand at the door and tell me. In order to get a farm number, they just need to meet with a a, a farm just coming to FSA, and then you just have to fill out the paperwork. So if you want to get on here and tell she's coming. She'll tell you. You guys have to meet. Okay. Great. All right, and then I'm going to, um, I just launched the um, poll to, to give us feedback on this one. And then um, I'm also posting that link to the breakout session right now too, so that when you're ready to go over there, you can click on it. Okay, and sorry I talked so fast. That's all right. Okay, so what I like to tell our producers to get a farm number just so that they're well prepared for the appointment is to bring information for their county parcel number because we have to go through and verify documentation when we create that farm number. And so we have to be able to see who the owners are and then if they decide to apply for programs as an operator, as an individual, rather than maybe an entity that could be the owner on the farm, um, then we would just have them create a lease 
Um, I, in my county, I have just an example that I show them so that they know kind of what USDA is going to look for on a lease to make sure it covers the um, program period. So if you were doing like cut flowers on your um, residential lot in like Salt Lake County, uh -huh. um, would it just be your ownership information for your, like your lot or your house or how would, what would you need to bring in? Yes. Yep. So you would just bring your ownership information and then you can talk with the program technician at that time about which portion of that property that you plan to essentially farm on. Um, so if you're doing cut flowers, you can just designate a section of that property where you're wanting to, to put that. Okay. Um, does zoning matter? Does zoning matter? Ooh. Um, not that I'm aware of. I, I think we can create a farm number for you, regardless of that, as long as, you know, we can show documentation that you are farming in that area. Okay. 